I want to talk about a new electric sedan from BYD. I, I'm a big fan of the sedans from BYD, of course. They're, they're generally brilliant. And that's just been uh, revealed with a 150 kilowatt hour battery because um, on the surface, it looks quite straightforward. It's, it's just a different looking, sl slightly different looking BYD seal with a massive battery. But once you look at the uh, numbers properly, it's actually quite strange, but in a good way, I think. This is the Yang Wang U7. It's one of the sub brands from BYD, which sits under the B uh, BYD's high end Yang Wang brand. Understandably, it's not the best name, probably won't go to Europe with that name or Australia because I can't imagine people dropping 60 grand or 40 grand on a Yang Wang. But uh, if they just drop it down to, I don't know, call it a YGW or something, I don't know, maybe it would sell better. That stuff needs to be dis discussed in five years time or in a year's time or whenever whenever they bring, uh, bring these cars over in, you know, under the Yang Wang brand. And the reason is it's getting a lot of attention. It's very, very simple. All over the internet, you've probably seen this car and there's now a new version of it that comes with a 150 kilowatt hour battery. So that's not a typo, you know, 150 kilowatt hour massive battery. And they've put it into a saloon car that you can go buy. So immediately that puts it into a very small group of electric cars globally with a battery that's, you know, above 100, 100 kilowatt hour, for example. Because even most large SUVs don't go anywhere near 150 kilowatt uh, kilowatt hour battery sizes. So this is a sedan, a low luxury, good looking sedan with a battery that's much bigger than I think uh, what a lot of people have in electric vans, for example, sadly. I think they should just pack in lots of batteries in vans and give them a real range, finally, because I, I you know, vans are good. It, like the Ford Transit, really, really great. Not when it's got a 60 mile range though, sadly. So naturally, when you see something like that, the first thought is range. BYD is claiming around a thousand kilometers uh, on the Chinese test cycle. So let's call it 800 in the real world, 750, something like that. So yeah, it's pretty good. And uh, I, I'm just gonna do a bit of a basic head conversion, 750, 800 WLTP, something like that. I'm, I'm gonna guess, you can have a guess, put it in the comments. It's obviously gonna weigh a little bit of, uh, a little bit. I don't know the weight of the car, even if you knock it down to motorway driving, cold weather, normal use, I think it would probably comfortably do distances that most EV owners would only ever do with multiple charging stops. And, and most people don't need to do 600 kilometers on a stop because I mean, that's a long way. That's like many hours of driving. People don't really do 600 kilometers without stopping. So what is interesting is that uh, this is not BYD experimenting with a new chemistry. This is still LFP blade chemistry. So it's not like new fantastic chemistry, almost certainly the second gen and uh, same basic chemistry that they used in the Dolphin and the Atto 3, but it's just much more dense. Basically, the difference here is simply scale. So they've just made it enormous. They've just put more of it in and uh, that tells you a lot about what this car is actually for. And because obviously it's going to have a big battery, there's the space between the front and back wheels, which are now pushed out more forward and more back, which creates more space, which makes it a better vehicle on a long highway because there's less pitch and, and that sort of thing on the roads. So the U7 isn't meant to be overly efficient, actually. It isn't meant to be light or sporty. It's meant to appeal to people comparing running costs. This is BYD showing that if you want range, they can give it to you without switching to fragile chemistries or relying on external suppliers or using NCM, NMC chemistry. And obviously the difference between NMC, NCM is the amount of uh, the materials specific to those abbreviated letters there uh, in it, which determines whether it's NCM, NMC, just so you know, it's good to know. The rest of the car lines up with that thinking as well, basically it uses a quad motor setup, one motor per wheel with power figures well over a thousand horsepower and it does zero to a hundred in under three seconds, which you, you're probably not gonna wanna do. Really, that's just not that fun. I don't think it's not that pleasant, not very useful anywhere, and you will destroy your tires. But yeah, it's frankly a bit ridiculous for a car of that size to be able to do that sort of speed, but some people want it, so why not? And it has advanced active suspension, rear wheel steering, and a lot of computing hardware on board. So there's obviously a lot to go wrong, hopefully, but BYDs generally don't go wrong, which is like the good selling point for BYDs. I think their longevity is like Toyota-esque, I would say, it's pretty good. Uh, this is not a minimalist car, really. It looks quite simple on the outside, but there's a lot of stuff going on under the skin and it's not subtle and it's, you know, it's very deliberately over-engineered, kind of like an Audi or something like that. And when you look at it <clears throat> like that, it's quite easy to think, at least initially, that maybe uh, this is the sort of thing BYD would eventually try to sell in places like the UK, Europe, Australia, 
especially Australia. And after all, they've been expanding very, very aggressively in these markets. And they've just, I mean, in the last year, the, uh, the sales of BYD tripled in the UK, for example. So they're, they're showing that they're willing to change, uh, challenge established brands in these markets head on. They're actually doing super well with that, which is quite a fascinating thing. Right now, the Yang Wang brand is very much China focused. There's no official export uh, plan for the U7, no confirmed right hand drive version of it either. No indication that BYD is preparing this car for the European or Australian regulations. I think that's a bit of a shame. I really do hope they do bring it and realistically, it does make sense to bring it, I think. Whether they will sell too many in these markets, I'm not so sure. They've probably got some good data on that or a bit of a strategy. Cars like this, incredibly expensive to homologate for small volume. So you, ugh, it wouldn't be cheap if they only do a little bit. So mass market stuff, they can homologate cost effectively. They require a lot of support, infrastructure, especially servicing and brand recognition that Yang Wang simply doesn't have outside China yet. So BYD's global strategy so far has been incredibly pragmatic and they lead with mid-priced cars that sell in volume even really rock bottom prices as well so the lower end of the market and they are very easy to service and that fits the local market expectations in say australia for example or the uk the u7 doesn't really fit into that pattern but i still think they would do quite well with it so it would be really great to think they would bring it but this car exists to make uh, a statement really just really just to show that they can do it and it's BYD saying to the market and particularly to other Chinese manufacturers and I suppose Toyota and legacy brands they can build something technically extremely good without any help from outside suppliers the battery the motors the electronics it's all in-house kind of just a bit of a showpiece really we can do it it's not that hard here it is so that's I think that's maybe why they're doing it kind of like a con a concept but if they made concepts really. So the 150 kilowatt hour battery, probably the clearest expression of that. It's not something that most people need. It's not something most people uh, would even fully use or even want or would pay extra for, but it does send a very clear signal about capability. That's important, even if the car itself never does leave China, because what happens at the top eventually uh, influences everything below it. So the way BYD packages a battery that large manages its thermal behavior, integrates it structurally into the car. All of that experience feeds into the next generation of more normal vehicles. So that is where uh, markets like Australia, the UK, I think would actually feel the benefit. It also quietly challenges a lot of assumptions about LFP batteries. People think they're not overly great, not overly dense in energy. No, they're pretty good, especially the Gen 2 stuff from BYD. So for years, LFP was treated as a compromise, a cheaper, safer, uh, battery but with lower range. BYD has spent the last few years steadily dismantling that idea and the U7 is probably the most extreme example of that. They're effectively saying that if you want a long range vehicle uh, you don't need exotic chemistry you just you know you just need manufacturing scale and control over your own supply chains. You could probably do it yourself really just fit a bigger battery in it maybe it's a little bit heavier but that's not the end of the world. Now would I personally want a sedan with 150 kilowatt hour battery? Probably not. I would say 100 110 is pretty good uh, but the, you know that's a lot of weight to carry around for a, you know just for the sake of an occasional long trip and I don't mind charging personally but yeah my, my cars one of them is a normal car and the other car has a really big battery that's pretty you know I do I do I don't mind having a slightly heavier car if I've got the range because I do actually do a fair bit of long range driving but charging a battery that size still takes time so no matter how good the charging curve is it's going to take a while but that's not really the point the the point is that BYD can do this now comfortably using technology that they already have and they can mass produce and uh, very few companies globally are in that exact position and they have fought to be in that position, I think. So no, I don't think that this car is coming to Australia or the UK, sadly, and not anytime soon anyway. But if it ever does, it'll be, uh, it'll be a while and it will be, you know, in a couple of years, at least two or three, four years. And once the brand is more established in these markets and the case might start to make more sense, then we might see that change or the sentiment change toward bigger sedans with massive batteries. But even as a China only vehicle, the Yang Wang U7 is worth paying attention to. I think uh, not because you'll buy one, but because it shows how far the technology has moved and how confident BYD has become. And that's the part that legacy automakers should probably be more worried about uh, than the car itself. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. Thank you as well to these people who are the channel members, just so you know. Really appreciate that. And I'm really excited for a good year in 2026. I really appreciate your time and uh, your joining as members and checking me a few dollars and buying me a coffee. Really, really touched with that, so thank you. 
Do you see a battery this big as useful? Is it unnecessary? Is it a bit ridiculous? What do you think about that? Thank you for watching.